The game of capitalism that I'm referring to is not a computer game or a board game. It is the real-life game that humans play where some people win, but most people lose. It's a game not dissimilar to the board game Monopoly, except that the real world typically has more rules and makes it harder to win. Proponents of capitalism will argue that if the government just step out of the way and let capitalism do its work, everything will be hunky-dory. Capitalists argue that government intervention hurts capitalism. And they're right, it does hurt capitalism. But is that the goal? Is that what we want for a free society? Unfettered capitalism? I think it's good to compare the real world with the board game Monopoly. In Monopoly, players race around the board trying to buy up as many properties as possible. If a player purchases a complete colour group, that is three or sometimes two properties of the same colour, they can start building houses and hotels on those properties in order to increase their revenue. Players that land on other people's property must pay the owner rent, based on how many houses or hotels are there. There's a lot of luck involved in the game, but also a little bit of strategy. The goal is to be the last one left standing by sending all of your opponents into bankruptcy. In the game of Monopoly, you could argue that there is some government intervention in the form of tax, but it's only a token amount and you only have to pay it if you are unlucky enough to land on the wrong squares. There's only two tax squares. So you could go the entire game without paying any tax. Once a single player gets past a certain critical mass of property ownership, they pretty much dominate the game and will eventually force everyone else into bankruptcy. I think the game Monopoly is a good analogy for unfettered capitalism. If we got rid of all government intervention, we would end up with one or two giant companies owning everything, and one or two people owning those giant companies. Unrestricted capitalism would hurt most people. Some people might argue, that's good. The best and brightest will bubble to the top and give us the best products and services. But I would argue that just as with the game Monopoly, a lot of luck comes into play. Those at the top aren't necessarily there because they sell the best products or offer the best services. They're there because they were lucky enough to reach that critical mass of ownership that allowed them to buy out the competition. Look at Facebook, for example. They were lucky enough to come out on top of the social media craze. Once they started getting enough income, they were able to start buying up their competition. Connect You, FriendFeed, Friendster, Friendly, Instagram, WhatsApp, the list goes on. You can see the full list in the link I've posted below. So as these big companies become more and more powerful, they can just keep buying up any companies that pose a threat to them. If I owned a little company that was a potential threat to Facebook, and they offered me $1 million, I would probably take it. And I think most people would. That's the real-life game of capitalism. The big fish eat the little fish. In the real world, we have an interventionist system. That is, governments intervene in the marketplace in order to correct the market failures and promote the general welfare of the people. Well, at least, that's the purported goal. We've realised that one or two companies owning everything is not good for society. But despite these interventions, despite having a complicated tax code and millions of laws with millions of rules and regulations, some companies are still able to achieve near-monopoly status. Just as Facebook keeps buying up companies, so do other huge companies. Proponents of capitalism and the free market will fight tooth and nail against tax increases. They'll argue that tax only hurts business and consequently hurts individuals. Ideally, they want to get rid of tax altogether. But I think we all know where that would lead. It would end up like a game of Monopoly where one person owns it all. We need rules and regulations to stop all the wealth going to a single company or individual. We need tax, or something like it, despite all our complaints against it. Some of you might argue that forced redistribution, i.e. tax, is unnecessary. Many rich people naturally become philanthropists. They donate lots of their wealth to charity and help those in need. Tax is coercive, whereas charity is voluntary. So let's look at a real-life billionaire and see what they are doing to help society. Bill Gates, the co-founder of Microsoft, is the world's second richest man with a net worth of approximately $95.6 billion. He's made a deal with Warren Buffett, the world's third richest man, to donate at least half of their wealth to charity. It's called the Giving Pledge, and currently there are 187 signatories. Most of the signatories are billionaires. The pledge is not legally binding, and it doesn't dictate how and where the money should be spent. It's more of a friendly agreement between rich people. 
Technically, they could donate all their money to the Be A Deer and Donate A Brazier charity, or the Zombie Squad, whose goal is to prepare and protect humanity against the upcoming zombie apocalypse, as well as participating in other charitable undertakings such as disaster relief. You could just donate all your money to your family, as long as your family are involved in some kind of charitable enterprise. Despite Bill Gates being retired for more than a decade, and despite him pledging to donate most of his wealth, he still manages to be the world's second richest man. He's the co-founder of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, along with his wife Melinda, which holds more than $50 billion in assets. Its primary goal is to enhance healthcare around the world and to reduce extreme poverty. In the US, the Foundation's goal is to increase educational opportunities and access to information technology. The Foundation Trust invests undistributed assets, with the exclusive goal of maximising the return on investment. It has been criticised for investing heavily in companies that have been shown to worsen poverty. It has also invested money in the GEO Group, which is America's second largest private prison corporation. A large part of the prison's work involves incarcerating and detaining migrants that have been detained as part of the Obama and Trump administrations. Although Bill Gates is one of the world's biggest philanthropists, he certainly doesn't go without. His $127 million home in Medina, Washington, took seven years to finish. It has a trampoline room, a 60-foot swimming pool, an underground garage, an enormous library with secret bookcases, 24 bathrooms, and 6 kitchens. I'm not sure why one family would need 24 bathrooms, but who am I to judge? He also owns a classic car collection, a private jet, a Bombardier BD700 Global Express that can cost upwards of $40 million, and owns lots of other real estate and ranches. He has stated that he doesn't like to spend his money on frivolous things, but one must wonder, who needs a trampoline room? And that's the major issue with leaving it up to billionaires to be in charge of wealth redistribution. Some billionaires could choose to hoard their wealth, others might donate to charities that don't really benefit many people. It's all based on the whims of a select few. Many Americans are living in poverty and have little to no ability to escape it. Are the American billionaires that made all of their money in America helping those people? Are they helping their fellow impoverished Americans? I don't blame Bill Gates. He's just playing the game of capitalism the best way he knows how. He's found a way to feel good about himself by donating some of his wealth to his own charity, but also allowing himself to remain one of the world's richest men. You see, once you have wealth, and lots of it, you don't really have to do much anymore to maintain it. Your money works for you. Just put all your money in an investment company. In Bill Gates' case, it's a company called Cascade Investment, which he is the founder and chairman of. Every year, you'll earn billions of dollars and you can donate some of that to charity. Your own charity, but a charity nonetheless. This makes people look up to you, as well as making yourself feel good in the process. The current capitalist system is great for a handful of billionaires. Imagine if we got rid of taxation altogether and left it up to the billionaires to decide how they should redistribute their money. It would be very risky indeed. Can we rely on a handful of rich people to help out the rest of society? I think we all know the answer. No, we can't. We need a democratically elected government that is there to serve the people. That is, a government of the people, by the people, for the people. We need some form of taxation in our current capitalist environment so that the rich don't just hoard all the wealth. If we get rid of tax, the whole world will just turn into a giant game of monopoly. One person will eventually win and get it all. Yes, taxation has many problems. I'm not saying it's perfect. Taxation often unfairly targets the poor, because wealthy individuals and large corporations are able to lobby the government to change the rules to suit the wealthy. It's not in the best interest of Bill Gates to increase the tax rate for rich Americans. That would hurt him and his philanthropy. And there lies the biggest issue. When wealthy people are afforded so much power, they use that power to keep themselves and their families in power. They may offer token gestures of philanthropy, donating $10 million here or $20 million there, but it doesn't hurt them financially in the slightest. If Bill Gates was serious about donating his wealth, well, it would all be gone by now, wouldn't it? But obviously, he's not going to do that. He likes his classic car collection. He likes his private jet. He likes being the second richest man in the world. I assume he's trying to hatch a plan to become the world's richest man again. Of course, he'd have to do it in a way where he isn't seen to be giving up on his philanthropy. Bill Gates is business savvy. He knows how to keep and maintain wealth in America. He knows the rules of the game and knows what he needs to do to keep winning. 
I'm not trying to diss capitalism. Well, I guess I am a little bit, but it has had its place. It has lifted so many people out of poverty and allowed them to live a somewhat decent life. But it needs rules. We can't just let a handful of people collect all the wealth. That hurts society. We need ways to redistribute that wealth, and currently, we use the taxation system here in the West. It's not perfect by any means, but the average person benefits from it. Of course we need to keep evolving. We need to find better ways to reduce wealth inequality. We can't have millions of people struggling to survive, and then five people owning $100 million houses. That's not very fair. And that's what this is all about, isn't it? Fairness. I want to live in a society where we look after our fellow man. If one man is on the streets, struggling to find food, well, we should give him some food. If millions of people are struggling to pay the rent, we should give them enough money to pay the rent. It's not fair that some people own vast amounts of wealth. More wealth than they'll ever need in a thousand lifetimes. But others are struggling to survive. This video is titled, The Game of Capitalism and How to Win. So I better give an answer. There are two options, depending on how you define winning. The first option is to follow in the footsteps of people like Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg. Create some software, get lucky promoting it, buy out all the competition once you become big enough, and then use your massive wealth to stay rich by investing wisely. Then, and only then, you have to found your own charity and promise to donate most of your wealth towards it over the course of your lifetime. You should always refer to it as your wealth, even though most of it came from the pockets of normal, hard-working individuals. You have to buy lots of over-the-top real estate, and then come up with reasons why you need it. The Zuckerbergs bought a $100 million plantation and a white sand beach on the island of Kauai. They stated that they bought the land because they're dedicated to preserving its natural beauty. On the other hand, if you're not able to become a billionaire, the other option to win this silly game is just to live your life in the best way you know how. Live a moral and ethical life. Help those in need. Be nice to people. Spend time with your family and friends. Fight the good fight. Fight for causes that you believe in. Support politicians that want to help the world, and don't support those who are just out to line their own pockets. Be charitable in your everyday life, not just when you become a millionaire or a billionaire. Charity doesn't require money. Charity just requires the time and the inclination. So what are your thoughts? Are billionaires helping the world? Or are they just greedy moguls taking advantage of the current political environment? Is the game of capitalism a fair game? Is it winnable? Should it be winnable? Is the board game Monopoly a good analogy of uncontrolled capitalism? Is uncontrolled capitalism bringing the world to ruin? Let me know in the comments section below.